Epic outdoor experiences involving close encounters with magnificent beasts of the wild are what keep us planning excursions across the globe time and time again. But no matter where we go or what animals we pursue, it seems that New Mexico elk hunting has found a significant home within our hearts. This time, Frank Bennett and I have decided to take on the challenge of an unguided elk and mule deer hunt with G3 outfitters and to experience the thrills of New Mexico hunting with good friends Paul Moe and Brandon Cornwell, both of which have never previously elk hunted. That's a elk, boy! <laughs> and we wonder why we're not seeing them by the glass. You think you can hit that? Talk's cheap, let's get it. That's a kill. <laughs> right? Why do you got that four on that arrow? What, man? You got the four on that arrow. What? Because it's my number four arrow. Your fourth, fourth best. So you come on an elk and you can use your fourth best. I didn't want to use my one, two, or three. <laughs> so I didn't want to damage them. that thirsty eating care. He was getting a drink. I get on the ground blind. They're standing here and here. Walking within 15 yards. I mean he knew we were here. He was looking for the eating care. He was getting a drink. Slow. Right in about 40 
Okay, so he's coming right down that ridge line. Now look, he's gonna look down towards Brink, so his eyes will be on us. So when you draw, make sure he's behind you. Not Brandon or what? Yeah. Give me something. Look at that shot. Just drill. 
What do you think, buddy? I'm stoked, man. New Mexico, I'm guided on. So last night, Paul and Brandon, sitting in the ground blind about 400 yards below here, heard a, heard a bull up here just going crazy. So we decided this morning that we were gonna park way far away here and just hike in here for a little bit. Band together, hunt. Yeah, and just stay together and hunt this morning and um, try to get one of these bulls working. We heard him, uh, we sat back and waited for a while until we heard him turn a bugle and then Paul and Bob. No, we just, uh, we made a move on him while you stayed back and you kept calling him and he responded real good to your call. So, man, you actually had to change your call direction because he was walking straight onto us. Yeah, so when Brandon and I, I could hear the bull coming and he started to angle away from where I thought the two of them were. So I just said, we need to start calling this other direction. And when I did that, he, he responded. He, he, he turned, and then, uh, but he came in within 20 yards of us, man. for a while I shut up on him because he was hot and I didn't want to just keep calling him. So I shut up for a little bit and I hit him with a cow call and he blew up real quick. And as he blew up, I just cut him off real quick for the bugle. And as soon as I did that, they said, he, he got hot and came right in hard. It was, uh, it was my first bull I ever called in. It was, was my first bull. bull I shot. New Mexico, unguided hunt. I'll do it yourself. Wild yeah. adrenaline doesn't get any better than this. I mean, holy Unbelievable. God. I can't believe it. My brother. Love, Love you, bro. I'm so awesome. happy. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm man, so happy. You know what? And the dude, like, the, a great shot. And this yeah. thing piled up 50, 40 yards. 40 yards from where he shot him. Yeah. I was shaking because I could hear him. I said he just cracked it. You could hear the shot. We were 100 yards behind me. Bob was right. Bob was right over my shoulder with the camera, and yeah. me and him were shaking because this thing was coming in hot on us, man. Oh, I, knew it. I knew it. Yeah. I said to Brandon, I said, when the last time when I cut him off, and then he bugled and I cut him off again, and he chuckled at the end. I said, he's literally got to be on top of him. Mm -hmm. He was. He ran on top of him, and then two seconds, pop, the home just get crushed. That's it. We laid one down. Now it's uh, round two. Go get the big boy. Most everyday folk would shy away from a mountain lion den, but not our friend Paul Moe. <laughs> Deeper he goes into the danger zone. He doesn't even have a knife. <laughs>